summer is here, and the Eurovision 2015 Song Contest is over. But that doesn't mean that the new music stops. The singles are coming thick and fast, and we're gonna review some of our favorites right now. So, you guys, I'm gonna kick this off. I really like Ace Wilder's "Stupid." This like is clearly inspired by some like. LSD trip she had in Goa or in India because she's talking about you know dumb and drunk and high best night of our lives. So the content I can't really relate to because I just drink water and lemon. But I am loving the beat. I'm loving the moves, and it's like distinctly Ace Wilder. Like so many artists in Eurovision struggle to have a unique sound, but when you hear this, you instantly know it's her. It's just like it's ultra high. Quality output, which is what you get from most like male first artists after they leave, they tend to have a very like high standard of production relative to like certain other Eurovision artists. <laughs> um, yeah, I do like Stupid, it's really like Bangra, and, like I'm all about that Bangra pop, and just like she should come back to male first. Bangra done well, not like the UMK Bangra from earlier this year, that didn't work. Whereas this, like, she makes it universal. Porig, do you agree? Yeah, I really like it. Um... But I think, and you're saying that it's distinctly Ace Wilder, but I think that could prove to be a problem for her if she keeps doing that. Because you hear it and you know it's Ace Wilder, and automatically it's reminded you of Riot or you're doing nothing. So like, I think she needs to mix it up slightly, but it's still a really, really good song. Two words. Breakout star. She has taken that Melfest momentum and kept on rolling. Now... Moving on, Portugal, a country we don't really associate with hits at Eurovision. Uh, Leonor Andrada has released a song, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, J Conhech. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I really liked this. I mean, she should have sung this at Eurovision. This was like, I mean, here she had personality. She had like a perspective. Whereas I thought her Eurovision song was just kind of bland and I can't even remember it. But this song, this is like modern, sexy, I, dark, the black and white, the lip, everything about this from the video to the song, I just loved. Oh, did you think dark? I thought it was very Leona Lewis. This felt very like a moment oh. like this, like better in time. I had real like... Leona Lewis vibes, which is a good thing. I like that. Her cover of Back to Black is terrible. Like, utterly awful. Stay away from it, Leonor. Go back to Portuguese Leona Lewis. You're on better ground there. Much better ground. <laughs> Poor Rig. See, my problem with Leonor is that outside of the music studio and off the stage, she's a really bright, bubbly personality. And, like, she wears kind of an eccentric clothes. And, like, we saw her in the red carpet and she was wearing a pink and orange dress with a big black hat. Mm -hmm. And then when she goes into the studio, it's like, oh, life is sucked out of her. And she's like a hell's angel singing all this dark, dark, dreary, boring stuff that, oh, like during the summer, we don't want to listen to her moping on about something in Portuguese. And I'm sorry, this, oh this, is, this song, I don't know, it's probably not better than a Eurovision song, but... It's probably a similar category, but she, she needs to move on and get out of the slump. So from what I'm hearing is that you want a more consistent Leonor. Maybe she's too manufactured right now, like she's not being true to herself. I don't know, someone who's more exciting. You can be dark, you can be, you can be dark and exciting at the same time. Well, I'm like, gonna there's nothing to stop you, but she's just mm. been dull and dark. I'm gonna need y'all to read the review on Wee Wee Blogs by Mr. Diego. He loves this song and so do I. I think it's a turning point for Leonor and it is an improvement from Eurovision. That sea that separates us, I mean, I'm in Africa, she's in Australia. It's a big old sea. But this song, Jay Con Hatch, really brought us together. I'm feeling it. Um, love you. Can you hum it? No. Nah. But it's, it doesn't but, stick in your head. No, but when I watch it, I enjoy it. So. And then you forget about it. Like, well, have y'all seen that 40 memorable moments of Eurovision video? We forget a lot. Okay, so next up, we have Paula selling an OV with their version of She's After My Piano, which, of course, became a huge hit in Belgium's national selection uh, in 2014. I mean, this is Euro, it's Eurotastic. I think what's great about their combination is that Paula selling... She actually in Romania is a traditional singer. She's not considered a pop music star. But Ovi drags her into these kind of EDM poppy songs and it showcases a different side of her, which she thus far has not done on her own. Um, so I, I like seeing their collaboration. As for the song itself, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, um, but I see why people love it. Angus. 
I really liked the original like Cirque du Soleil vibe the song had going on. And now with mm. Paul and Ovi, I don't know. I feel like Ovi always tricks Paul or something into doing this. I feel like he's always on the phone. She's like, oh no, it'll be really classical. You'll look really classy and cool. It'll be really like good, like classical. And then he's just like, tricked you. It's a trashy pop song. And then he just is like, sing a high note, sing a high note. You've got to sing a high note. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it really suits them as much as it suited like to Fabiola or whatever the group who already did it in Belgium because Paul and Ovi are like fun but they're also like serious they're kind of like they're winking at the camera but also they can do like really serious dance pop and this is more like comedy than anything else like it makes no sense it's just like she's after my piano do 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 and it's just like why is she running after his piano? That's not even a good sexual metaphor. It literally makes no sense. His piano is enormous. Pour it. <laughs> um, I think it's like musical junk food or something that um, you're listening to it and afterwards you're like, mm, I didn't really like that. But then you kind of have a craving to listen to She's After My Piano again because the riff gets stuck in your head. But there's very little substance to it. Basically, it's that riff repeated over and over again and there's a few kind of EDM beats. It's mm. definitely not award worthy or anything like that but for what it is it's probably good um paula elevates it slightly it's trashy pop but addictive at the same time and there's nothing wrong with that we all love doritos i mean i love do y'all have uh, those pizza bakes oh they are so good it doesn't have to be filling to be satisfying mm. now Helena Paparizu, winner of Eurovision. You know, there's a crisis going on in Greece, but she is re releasing some fierce music in Sweden. Her latest is Love Till It's Over. Now, y'all, this video is a hot mess. I mean, you got a girl whose dad won't let her go out. So she sneaks out, follows a dude. He ends up robbing a convenience store with a handgun. And then they go to the beach to party. And lo and behold, her friends ditch her and she's arrested. But father saves the day. We don't think he'll be letting her out of the house anytime soon. Um, I gotta say, I don't really like Helena Paparitsu doing this type of music. I really like her with that distinctive diva song, like Survivor. You know, it's like woman in charge. Whereas this, like, I don't know, it feels like a forced collaboration. She's with House Twins, I believe. Um, it doesn't really work for me. I think it's a waste of her talent. I feel like if this was Ella Ferry at Ella Ferry U, then we'd be much more into it because she just does trashy, like, I a beat for style like dance beach sounds whereas Lena's kind of a bit more there's a lot more tour as an artist she's a lot less one-dimensional than just I'm just gonna sing a dance song so it's all new like Mambo number one there was like a very like Greek feel to it and like Survivor was the whole diva and angel and this is just a bit cheap for her it feels more like a Lena Paparizzi b-side than anything else it's very anonymous because for someone who has the talents of Helena, like, the song is just repeating the same kind of few lines over and over again. It's not even a very good dance song. Mm. Like, you, you'd, maybe it'd be okay if her talents were wasted on something that was ridiculously catchy and ridiculously good. But th this is kind of monotonous. It goes on, it's over. It's a dance song, but it's not even very danceable. So uh, it's a miss. And we're going to rewind back to Eurovision 2010. Christina from Slovakia. She, of course, crashed out in the semifinals, making me lose 50 pounds on Betfair. Let's not talk about that. But she is back with the single Ta Ne, which usually means yes, but in this context means no. Now, y'all, this is, like, really catchy. I mean, it's kind of cheesy. I mean, if you look at it, the video, it's all pink and blue and bubblegum pop. And some guy is trying to convince her to fall in love. And, like, she's like, no, 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 no. They end up at an aisle or walking down the aisle together. And even at her own wedding, she's like, no, 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 honey. If you had said no before, you shouldn't have gone to the church. Um, this is a nice, refreshing kind of step away from what a lot of people associated her with, which was ethnopop. It is, but I still think I prefer her ethnopopness to this. Like, Eurodance is good when it's done. This is a good piece of Europop, but I just hope, like... I hope there's more to her artistry. I hope she's not just selling out in the name of chart success. I actually think it's really good that she embraces the cheesiness and the Europop. Like, say we were talking about Helena there a moment ago, whereas Helena seems restrained that she's not fully embracing the dance, whereas uh, Christina's like, I'm doing pop and I'm going to do it really well and put all my effort into it. And like she, in the video, like she clearly is loving what she's doing. And it still does have that ethno pop feel because it's got the different instruments that you associate with Eastern Europe in the background. So it is ethno pop, but it's probably maybe more mainstream. Um, 
but I love it. I, like I, it's been playing on loop for the last few days now. Pass the man some bubble gum. <laughs> um, uh, did y'all listen to Barbara Deck's new single, Falling in Love? I mean, <laughs> let me just tell you, there's a reason she's known for the Barbara Dex Award and not for her music. This song is, it's kind of bad. Like I, it's really bad. You know, it's basically all about the bass, except it's called Falling in Love. And like the lyrics are kind of raunchy at times. She says, um, hold on a second, cause I don't want trouble. Don't let me tell you you're so drunk you're seeing double double. Sounds like she had a bad experience um, at some point in her life. And there's another line where she talks about, and I have to find this. Yes, she says, this is a reality and not some kind of fiction. Shake it, shake it, honey, because I need it. You got to prove yourself because I want to feel it. Now, y'all, I'm not going to use the word vibrator, but she is talking about some nastiness. Um, yeah, and I, I also feel like the poor girl or woman now probably worries about what she's wearing all the time <laughs> after what happened to Eurovision. And her voice hasn't improved with age or anything. It's kind of strained. And to be strained on, like, such a basic pop song, like, it's not a very difficult song if you're able to sing. Yeah.